Welcome back to Questing Beast. I'm Ben. Today we'll be taking a look at Troika Numinous Edition. This is the review copy that I was sent of the hardback version. This is essentially an expanded deluxe version of Troika. It contains all of the information from the original with a lot of extra um, in terms of illustration, layout, and even a full-on adventure that you can use. Something that I really would have liked to have for Troika. So it's finally here and I feel like I understand the game a little bit better because of it. So here's our cover, here's our back, and let's look at what we have inside. So I'm not going to go too much into detail about the system since I've already covered that in a previous video. I'll put a link to the original one right up here. But the basics is that Troika is a modernized version of fighting fantasy, which was a sort of choose your own adventure-ish uh, series of books where you would roll up a very simple rpg light character and then you'd read through a book and make choices and roll dice this has been fleshed out into a complete system here and it you're a bunch of very strange characters so there's 36 classes that are more like 36 different species and it all takes place in a planescape like city called troika and the assumptions that you're traveling around the multiverse exploring so great layout here each of the um classes are get their own unique page with their own art by the same artist from Silent Titans. I'll see if I can pronounce his name correctly. So the art is done by uh, Dirk Detweiler Lechty. Hopefully I've said his name correctly. He does most of the art in this with uh, some extra art by Sam Mamelli, Andrew Walter, and Jeremy Duncan. So we have things like the Befowler of Pawns, the, bu the Burglar, the Kakogen, and so on. And um, Dirk's art is, again, quite abstract, similar to what we see in Silent Titans. And I think that works quite well for Troika, because a lot of these descriptions are so odd that it allows more room for imagination and piecing together what your version of this looks like. Because across the entire multiverse, you wouldn't expect all the creatures to look quite the same. excellent paper quality it has this you know slightly um, yellowed uh, texture to it it feels very thick really great to the touch skip ahead a little bit the main advantage here over the previous one is the higher quality of the physical book and the beautiful artwork along with the adventure itself Great piece by Sam Amelli right here. He's the same artist who did my recent uh, logo for Questing Beast. He's a great artist. So the basics of it is this is a 2D6, 2d6 system. And you are, uh, whenever you roll to attack, that can determine whether you hit and also whether the enemy hits back against you. It has a crazy initiative system where you're drawing chits out of a bag. A lot of really fun ideas here. Um, it's definitely not designed to be balanced in any way. It's a game of crazy adventures across the multiverse. Each character has is more renowned for their distinctiveness than being especially powerful or balanced against any others. We have a bestiary in the back here. Similar to what we see in the original book, but of course with illustrations. That's a great piece. And then near the back, we get to the adventure itself, which I think is the highlight of the Numinous edition. Here we go. Blanc Mage and Thistle. Basically, this is a great way to introduce players to the entire city of Troika. So the idea here is that they arrive in Troika, they're trying to find a place to stay, and they arrive at this hotel. You're trying to get to your room, which is up on the top floor of the hotel, and you're going to go on a crazy adventure to get there. The best way to describe this, I think it reminded me most of Spirited Away, where the main character goes to the bathhouse of the spirits, and she's trying to get to the top of the bathhouse, and she keeps running into stranger and stranger things. She's going up elevators, she's going upstairs, she's avoiding weird monsters that she doesn't understand, and that's the feeling that you get from this. There's a lightheartedness to it, uh, slightly goofy, um, but there's a lot of wonder packed into it at the same time. And it does a great job of conveying that tone that this whole book is going for, so it makes it much easier to adapt that tone when you might be writing your own adventures for it. 
So I'll give you the map at the back first. I think it gives you a clearer sense of how it works out. So it's kind of an abstract map, but the idea is that you have the whole hotel right here, and there's two main routes to the top. Either you can take the elevator up to the top, or you can take the stairs. And whichever route you choose to do, there are um, events, characters, encounters that you have along the way. And I suppose you could switch back and forth. You go up the elevator a bit, decide, nope, I'm out, and then take some hallways until you get to the staircase, move up a bit there, and so on. There's also rules for just wandering around the hallways and encounters that you can have there. When you finally get to the very top floor, there is a crazy roof party going on. And this is a great segue into the rest of Troika because all sorts of crazy people from across the multiverse are there and there are hooks galore for all sorts of other adventures that you might want to start your characters off on. So looking at some of the encounters that you might run into. So we get uh, first floor is an old lady. An old lady just wanders on and starts asking you very probing personal questions and she won't stop doing it. A great way to get the players talking and maybe make them a little bit nervous. Uh, there's a room where, um, or a encounter where people just start adding tigers. A woman just starts putting, pushing tigers onto your elevator one after another after another. So there's a rising, there's an escalating tension here as the potential kinetic energy and potential danger of the scene rises and rises and it's waiting for something to set it off, which is a great adventure design. I really like that. There's a mysterious friend, so you get to a particular floor, and you realize that there is a guy who's been there and seems to know you, but you don't remember them ever getting on, and they follow you around and help you. And there's no explanation for how it happened or why it's happening. You just have to kind of roll with it. And it's a great hook that the DM can you know, hook other things onto. Going up the stairways, you might find things like a demon seawater leak, a slug monarch that's just blocking the way. Let's see what it says here. An enormous slug is wedged into the stairway, his four heralds warding off guests and a mandrel porter carrying towels. No one may violate his majesty's personal space and dignity and be suffered to live. They will fight anyone trying to pass or touch the monarch, but they will surrender after the second time one of them gets hurt, flipping through the banisters and away down the walls of the stairway if possible. So how are you going to get past this giant slug? That's up to you. These sorts of games don't provide answers to these puzzles. It just provides you with questions and problems. It assumes that players are going to be creative enough to figure it out. Getting to the very top, we have a great list of interesting hooks that you can throw at players. For example, word reaches you that the second coming of one god or another is happening a few streets from here at an all-night bathhouse and spa. But which one? The first people to arrive with offerings will undoubtedly be granted you demonhood. Or, for example, mm, a short bearded man wearing the raiments of a befowler of pawns. So there's all sorts of hooks to actual player classes. So if you are also a befowler of pawns, then you'll have a way of, a way of getting in here. Named Captain Treacle is busily soiling the moonshine punch bowl fountain. The mandrels don't seem to mind. Treacle insists that he is simply honoring the traditions of his people. So there's all sorts of crazy things happening around and players can use those things to expand uh, what they want to do. Because this is a very player-driven adventure and a very player-driven type of game. So you give players hooks, you let them run. And we have a symbol character sheet at the back. I've seen a lot of all other great character sheets for Troika also available online. And we have an oops table because magic will inevitably go awry. So that is uh, the hardback numinous edition of Troika. Definitely an improvement over the original one, just in terms of the sheer quality, the construction, and the completeness. The adventure really makes it. When I was reading the original version, I really loved the flavor of it, but I could not picture how this was supposed to work together. Like what sort of setting was it supposed to take place in? How did all of these themes combine? And the adventure, I think, makes that much clearer. And now I would feel much more comfortable running a game of this. So I'll put links down in the description below, as usual, where you can get your own copy of Troika Numinous Edition. And thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, remember to subscribe, and you can even click the bell icon if you'd like to get notified when new reviews drop. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time.